What's up y'all, Dark Sizzle and Puddin here today. And in today's video, we did something a little different than we normally do. We were chasing exotics, so we caught a bunch of fish on fishing rods and then we switched over to bow fishing and I shot my first ever Florida Gar crazy looking fish. So this is Florida Gar Catch Clean Cook. Check out this video starting now. Oh yeah, baby. Oh, I got some bait, baby, yeah! All right, what's up, guys? Good morning. We are doing something a little different today. I got some beautiful shads, heck yeah, in my black pearl cast net. Open the thing, go quick, quick, quick. These baits die really fast, and you know me, I love catching my bait first thing in the morning. Yeah, buddy, beautiful shad. And this is gonna be your, your freshwater shad. We are on Lake Ida today, and we are I'm gonna try to catch some beautiful exotic fish like clown knife fish, peacock bass, cichlids, striped bass, sunshine bass, you would also call it, not striped bass. But having a great day, you can see these awesome little baits. They're gonna work great today. Oh yeah, let's see if we can get another throw in and get some more in the boat. Nice. Oh, oh look at that one. We got them. Uh, mixed in dirt there from the bottom. We got some. Not bad, not bad. They gotta go right in the well. These fish do not last very long at all. So they can't touch the floor or anything. And you guys are always asking me too, why am I wearing this jacket? Well, it's a tip for you throwing the cast net so you don't get all wet. And I know a lot of you guys were like, was this filmed in spring? No, I'm wearing my cast net in the middle of the summer to avoid getting soaking wet first thing in the morning. All right, nice. Let's see if we can get one more throw and it's time to go fishing. <laughs> nice job, Dr. Sizzle. Yeah, we're gonna show you, I think, a couple of varieties of ways to catch fish here on Lake Ida. And you guys always wanna know about how to catch exotics and all that kind of great stuff down here in South Florida. And it's super windy offshore, so we decided to do this. And we also need pictures for Darcy's calendar this year because we haven't been out here a lot. But uh, yeah, so catch a shad. We just find them on the, uh, on the depth finder, like it shows right here. You can also see them flipping sometimes. And you can also see pelicans out here a lot of times. So those are really the three signs. And today we're just mostly throwing on what we see on the- uh, Low ants. On the low ants depth finder. So uh, that's how we're catching some shad. And we bought some shiners this morning, just in case. We got a fish. It's a large mouth. Yay. Stay hooked. Stay hooked, little buddy. Sweet, finally got a fish. Catching all that bait this morning. We got fresh bait, and we got the first fish in the boat. Cute little large mouth. Not the biggest one in the world, but you know what? We will take it. Nice to break off the skunk. We've been out here like two hours now looking for fish, and the bite is just not turned on as we hoped it would be. But that's why it's called fishing, and it can always turn on more. So I'm gonna get this guy released, get the lines right back out, and hopefully catch some more fish. We're looking for those exotics though. Got a fish on. Woo, now he knows he's hooked. Gotta increase my drag here. It's coming to the surface. What do we got, what do we got? All right, he's coming up. That last one was a bite on the surface under a bobber. And now this one just ate a, a, a live bait on the bottom. And it's a peacock bass. Nice. Another species in the boat. Woo, hook perfect. Nice fish, super pretty. That is a really gorgeous specimen right there. It's been a while since I caught a peacock bass. All right, hooked perfectly. Let me just pop the hook out. Beautiful female peacock bass. Also part of the cichlid family. Bite much harder than a largemouth. That little largemouth, this fish fought twice as hard. So beautiful fish. Always make sure you support their bellies too. I'm sure you guys know that, or hold them straight up and down, but that's it. All right. The females are never are never as pretty as the males, but she's still a gorgeous fish. She's just not really bright colors, you know. All right, let's let her go. Get some more. Bye, fishy. I think there's a fish there. Yeah, there's a fish there. Nice, another fish in the boat, crushing it. We just put out that live bait too. And they're getting a little more chunky, a little more bigger here. 
No complaints. Nice fish. Barely hooked. That just popped right out. Chill out. A little bigger than that first large mouth. Not bad. They're getting bigger though. That's what counts. Let's let them go and get some more. I have been seeing a bunch of gar here in this freshwater canal and I'm going to try to shoot one. And if I do, that'll be awesome and hopefully we're going to clean him and we're going to cook him up. Let's go. Seeing a ton of Oscar fish. What? Seeing a ton of Oscar fish. Those Oscars. Got him. I think I got him. What? We're gonna see. I got him. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Stop the boat. It stopped. No, no, no. Help me, help me, help me. Help me, help me, help me. You know, just lift him with the with the thing, right? He should be stuck. He should be stuck. All right. Just shot my first fish ever with my own bow. <laughs> I'm so happy. I have shot fish in the past. That is a nice one. Look at that fish. I mean, I'm pretty sure the bow should stay there, right? Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> he's alive still. All right. Want to get him in the net? He doesn't seem like he's going anywhere. Watch out. No, it's through him. Woo! Yeah, buddy! Get away from my net! <laughs> That's a monster! Dude, he was sitting down like two feet and I just like got him right in the middle, baby! What'd I tell you? <laughs> nice! We got a gar catch clean cook just like that. And he's alive. So <laughs> solid fish for the first one on my left hand bow. Woo! Alright, making the boat a bloody mess. Let's go get some more. I'm a stoked now. <laughs> <laughs> that was so much fun. Got his butt. <laughs> he was just chilling, sitting there, sitting right there. He was just like chilling like two feet down right here. And this is really murky water that we're dealing with right now. And uh, we're trying to catch some fish this morning too. And we're not having too much luck with that. But I saw a ton of these big gar. This is actually a decent sized one chilling here in this waterway. And I was like, I brought my bow today. So I need to practice and catch some fish. So now we got ourselves some dinner. What about that? That was awesome, Dark Sizzle. Thanks. I'm so proud of you. I'm so happy you finally shot my first fish we literally, on, my, on my bow. We literally failed the bass fishing and catching exotics. So it was just too hot. Yeah. And then she decided to do this, so it's total credit to her. Yeah. I, I had nothing to do with this. 1-1 one, one so far. And what kind of bow you got? This is a uh, hooligan, well, this is an AMS hooligan bow, and it has this awesome little uh, reel compartment here, which you should always have a nice little yeah, attachment like that for bow fishing. And yeah, I was pretty thrilled. Again, left hand bow, and I just got their combo. Nothing too yeah, crazy. Just from Bass Pro, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's just from Bass Pro, and I wish it was a different color, but whatever, it works. <laughs> it works. My favorite color is blue. Yes. Get another one. All right, let's see if we can get another. They're also the Florida Gar. I don't know if I said alligator gar, but it's a Florida Gar. Back at the house, guys, and it's time to clean up my first Florida gar. And I also wanted to tell you too, we said we're gonna go look for some more. We did for about another hour. And a lot of the ones that I did see, I saw a couple others, were about like a foot long. You know, I didn't really want to shoot them. I was looking for a little bit of a bigger size. So we got one, that's what matters. We got dinner, I'm very, very excited. First things first that I want to tell you is that I have never cleaned one of these bad boys. So we're gonna to learn together and I have watched a few videos and we're gonna do the traditional way that most people do it. But before we do dive into that, I wanna briefly talk about the awesome sunglass sale we have going on right now. And it's about to end at the end of the month, this month of August. So check out Revo Sunglasses, Revo.com. All the information is gonna be down below. You can save up to 30, you're going to save 30% on every frame you purchase, which is pretty sweet. You gotta use my coupon code Darcy30 to save 30%, which is a huge discount. These are the crawler flame crawler frames and they have over nine different lenses for you to choose from glass lenses and they use a nasa light based management system which is really cool uh, so go ahead and check them out we really appreciate that and use the code quick because it's ending fast so let's dive right into this guy first things we need to do for it is use my fillet knife and we're going to make a cut right behind his head here and if you guys have seen this in the past we're going to you know, you probably are going to be familiar with how I'm going to do this. And if you haven't, we're going to learn together. So what you want to do here is take it right underneath 
the scales because the armor on this guy is absolutely insane. So let's see if I can get underneath here. Underneath the scales and then cut down. Underneath the scale, I don't want to point towards myself. There we go. And then I'm gonna do the same exact thing on the other side. Let's go underneath the scales and angle it down just like any other fish that I would fillet. Okay, these things are just the craziest looking things ever. I never, I always catch them, but I always end up releasing them. So this is the first one I'm ever going to clean. So we're gonna see how this goes. And right here, after I made that cut there, which you can't really see it yet, but I'm gonna take these tin snips, shears, whatever the heck you wanna call them. And this should be the best thing in quite a few videos that I saw. This is exactly what people are using. So we're gonna see how this goes. You're supposed to, basically you're supposed to cut all the way down the backbone or the spine here. So let's see if I can get in here. I might need to make a bigger opening actually. This is just the craziest skin ever. And I'm left-handed, so like all tools are made for right-handed people. So my life is that much tougher. <laughs> Starting to work. Do you hear that though? That is the craziest fish ever. And this is the way you cut them because what we're gonna harvest is the two big back straps on this fish. Uh, they basically can breathe oxygen in low, like in, they breathe oxygen sitting still in areas of water that have very low oxygen in the water. So they have an air bladder and most of the time they're just like sitting there in the grass, like what I saw when I shot this guy. And then we're gonna go all the way down. I can see some of that meat already. It looks quite awesome. Oh, and a lot of you guys too, I guess a lot of you guys don't realize this, but the fish hook and anchor bracelets that I'm constantly wearing, I saw a couple comments in the last video, you guys asking where to get them. I make them. Um, I haven't been mentioning it quite yet too often, but I make them myself. So go to my website, all that information will be down below. Adult and child sizes available. You can see the ones on both my wrists here and uh, get your own lucky dar sizzle fishing bracelet and you'll be supporting me so i would appreciate it if you want to check that out too as well as the awesome necklaces all the necklaces you see me wear i make those too myself a lot of awesome nautical pendants available for purchase all right once you get to this back fin where i'm here right now i see a lot of people in their videos just cut straight down so that's what i'm going to do you can use a knife too but starting to get the hang of these shears or snips whatever the heck you want to call them so just like that but again the backstrap meat is up here so we're going to harvest that i'm going to flip them around do the same exact thing on this side of them and i heard that the maybe the their guts or their fit their eggs or something is toxic to humans so that's why we're going to like kind of do this backwards compared to all the other fish that i fillet we are going to take his skin off off his body and then we'll remove his fillets. All right, so now that we made that initial cut down the back, what I heard that you can use your fillet knife or even use your fingers and get in here and start to separate this crazy thick armor plating from the fish's skin. We got a little rain shower, but no big deal. We're gonna work through it. You see I'm starting to separate it, but it's still crazy attached. That is insane. But look at that meat, that does not look bad. That looks really good actually. So now that I got a little separated, I'm gonna use my fillet knife to help me with this. Start separating the rest of it. But first time doing this, I'm sure a lot of you guys that live anywhere in the freshwater areas of, of the United States or wherever you live, have probably caught a ton of these. So if you guys have any uh, tips for me, go ahead and drop them down in the comments below. We're all here to learn from each other, you know? All right, so made that cut, check that out. I'm gonna finish the head up here. It's starting to peel away, but look at the thick thickness of that skin. That's well over a quarter inch. Crazy, just totally reminds me of an alligator. These things have been adapted to be like, I don't think they have any predators other than alligators, honestly. Nothing can penetrate the skin. Let's make sure that's separated up here. There we go. All right, now that we got that mostly separated, let's try to take off this back strap. All right, so now what I want to do is I just want to follow his spine bone. I think it's right in here. There, you feel it with your blade and run along that spine bone or backbone. And let's remove that beautiful back strap. 
fish was really slimy. I had to clean off a bunch of slime, but besides that, the meat looks excellent. Really shocked. One very long piece of meat. And these rib cage bones go down and then I'm cutting straight across to remove the meat. They just stick out so far, like perpendicular to the fish. Here it comes. Wow, that was really cool doing it differently. Look at that piece of meat. Not bad at all. You see that slime on my hands? That's kind of gross. But besides that, that meat looks pretty freaking good. Nice back strap, nice and white. Not smelly whatsoever, I swear. This fish was smelly when he came out of the cooler, but this does not smell. This looks pretty good. So I am stoked. And you can see right there what I was talking about, about the uh, rib cage bones. Those are all ribs and those are sticking out straight across the fish. So I'll do the same exact thing on the other side. And then I'll meet you guys in the kitchen for the cooking with pudding portion of this video. I'm excited to try my first Florida Gar ever. What's up guys? Another great job to sizzle on that gar. Welcome guys to another edition of Cooking with Pudding. And obviously today we are cooking gar. And I wanna mention one thing real quick is that uh, I know, you know, I had said in the, early in the video that we were gonna show you all kinds of great techniques to catch all these exotics. Uh, like Darcy had mentioned, the clown knives and the peas and the sunshine hybrids. Um, we didn't really get to all that, but uh, the main tip with the, uh, with the fishing with those shiners and everything, you really gotta tackle down so the fish swim right, which means like eight pound test and tiny hooks. But I will put some videos up here of all our past excursions, catching all sorts of exotics from the backyard to Lake Ida to Miami, and we'll put those links uh, also down in the description below so you can actually figure out how to catch those things. But uh, I'm just doing a simple fried gar, fried gar nuggets. And basically what I did, and I got some B-roll here for you. And again, we're trying to keep everything so simple is I got this Louisiana fish fry stuff. Well, first I cut them, these nice loins into chunks. Like, and you wanna make the chunks when you're frying anything or cooking anything really, all pretty much basically the same size. So they cook evenly, right? And then, uh, so I cut these into nice uh, clean sizes here with my nice uh, Smith's knife, of course. And then Darcy bought this Louisiana uh, coating, uh, fish fry coating from, I don't know, just from the store, no big deal, here it is. And uh, that's a beer batter. So of course we had to use land shark. So I took a, uh, a cup of land shark, kind of mismeasured it and it was a little dry. So I added another half a cup, no big deal. And then uh, I'm just frying it in this beautiful pan you guys gave us. Uh, the oil is at about 350. It's taking about four minutes to cook. And uh, so it's really super simple, guys. And we did actually have gar once, like four years ago, uh, at, at uh, this pit fishing place up uh, in North Florida. It was delicious. And I expect these are gonna be delicious too. So um, we're almost done. We also got some corn on the cobs. Sizzle, show them the corn on the cob. That's sizzle on the camera for a change of pace. Looking good. And you can see I'm just finishing up on over here. And then when I'm done, I put them on this nice tray. Says a look at that. And this tray and this pan and all the stuff that you see pudding using in the kitchen and a lot of other stuff we use on the channel is all available on that Amazon store. So I'll, we'll put that right down here. But of course the link is always in the description of the video. So you can go over there and you can check out lures and pans and blenders and all kinds of stuff that we use here. So uh, I'm almost done and we're gonna meet you over the table for the taste test. Let's do it. All right, Dr. Sizzle, tell us how it tastes. I'm gonna break this chair. Slam on this chair Are you like calling this. me fat girl? Just saying. <laughs> Have a gar bite. I've already had 11 of them. Dude, he's like been eating them as he's been cooking them. And you see how there's like a quarter less? He has like a quarter and I have a full plate. Like he's just chowing them away. They're really, really good. And by the way, guys, I'm really addicted to this Dano seasoning. This stuff is pretty freaking good. I literally put it on pizza last night. It's good for everything, low sodium, corn. I'm addicted to it now. And if you, you don't know till you Dano. So if you're interested, I have a link down in the description below. Check it out and give it a try. It's actually really good. I'm shocked, it's really good. I'm not joking. I'm addicted to the land sharks though. <laughs> and the land sharks pretty good too. But we got romelade sauce here and tartar sauce. I'm not a big fan of tartar, but I like the romelade. And this, the sauce is from the same company that made the uh, beer batter. Yeah. Have you tasted the things yet, the sizzleness? This is pleasantly like really good. It's not too <laughs> chewy. It doesn't fall apart. And it's just way different than what you would expect from a fish like that because he's crazy looking, he's stinky, he's very, very slimy. And then he has this delicious meat. He's stinky on the outside, but he wasn't stinky on the inside. No. No. no, no, I, no. I honestly gotta say, the last time we had them years and years ago, they were better. But they're not bad. 
You don't like it? I didn't say I didn't like it. I said they were better. It's like it's like one lobster tail is better than the other. Well, <laughs> maybe not like that, but they're good. They're good. I mean, yeah. I've had a whole bunch. I've eaten my whole plate here almost. It's already. really good. No, no complaints. <laughs> it's super good. And that little bit of seasoning too is making it extra good. A little bit firm, but besides that, it's great. I probably no haven't cooked it. I'm really excited to go blow fishing again. It's a lot of fun. Even though I only shot one fish, it was a lot of fun <laughs> for that 30 seconds. Right? So. No, it was awesome. <laughs> We'll definitely do it again. Yeah. And uh, so until next time, guys. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much for watching. Sorry we missed a video this week, too, by the way. Mm. Brian, um, go ahead. Brian, he's got his mouth Don't full Don't blame now. me. He's got his mouth full now. It's totally his fault. Really rough offshore. We could have totally fished. But unfortunately, Brian is still healing from his accident about two weeks, three weeks ago now, um, falling on the truck and hurt his ribs. So we're sorry we missed a video this week, but don't worry, we're right back on track, right back on schedule. Thank you so much for watching. Until our next video, follow your, your dreams, dreams and keep, keep on, on catching. catching. Oh yeah.